Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the first FPV RaceBit F4 flight controller. This flight controller packs a couple of very interesting features and today in this video I'm going to go over them and over its packs and soon I'm going to feature it in a build video. Inside the box you can find the flight controller and as you can see the soft mounts are already inserted to the M3 mounting holes. In addition, you're also going to find the connection diagram and in the final version, you're also going to get some spacers and screws and a harness for connecting the flight controller with a 4-in-1 ESC. The weight of the flight controller is about 7 grams. The distance between the M3 mounting holes is 30.5 mm and its outer dimensions are 36.9 by 36.9 by 6 mm. The board that I have can pre-flashed with Betaflight 4 and it's running STM32 F405 firmware. As I mentioned before, the Race Speed Flight Controller packs a couple of interesting features. So first of all, it features a built-in camera switcher. So on the front of the board, you can find camera 1 and camera 2 video in inputs. By default, it's going to be set to the first one and you can control which camera input to use by assigning an auxiliary switch to the user 2 interface under Betaflight modes tab. Next to camera 2 and camera 1 pads, you can find the camera VCC and the ground and you can select whether to use the voltage from the battery or 5 volts by soldering these 3 pads over here. By default, the center pad is going to be soldered with the right one, so the camera is going to be powered off directly from the battery and if you're going to solder the center pad with the left one, it's going to be powered using 5 volts. Over here you can find another 3 soldering pads, which are going to set the function of this pad over here. By default, the center one is going to be soldered with the top one, so this pad is going to be set to RX2, which is located next to TX2, and if you'd like, you can also solder the center one with the bottom one, and then this solder pad is going to be set to camera control. Another nice feature is that this flight controller features both an 8 pins connector for connecting the flight controller with a 4 in 1 ESC, and you can also find the appropriate soldering pads next to it, so in case the connector breaks, you can simply use them. The flight controller can be powered off directly using LiPo batteries between 2 to 6 cells, and next to the 4 in 1 ESC connector, you can find these pads, which are going to set the flight controller to use either the internal or the external current sensor and will enable you also to link the telemetry pad with RX2 for using ESC telemetry. On the right side of the flight controller you can find the TX6 and RX6 pads and in total you have 6 free UART ports which is more than enough, then the buzzer plus and buzzer minus, ground pads, 3.3 volts and 5 volts pads and SDA, SCL and LED pads. Another unique feature of this flight controller is that it has a built-in power switch for the VTX. So over here you can find two soldering pads which are bridged by default. When they are bridged the VTX is always on, however if you are going to unbridge them you'll be able to turn on and off the VTX by assigning an auxiliary switch to user 1 under beta flight modes and this feature is mostly useful for racing. The VTX can be either powered using 5 volts or the battery voltage, so over here you can find three soldering pads and by default they are not soldered, so you should pay attention that you will need to either solder the center one with the top one in order to power the VTX directly from the battery, or solder the center one with the bottom one in order to power it using 5 volts. Next you can find the pads for the VTX, which are designed to align with the pads of the TBS Unify Pro Nano. Over here you can find two boot pads that you will have to bridge in order to enter DFU mode, so as you can see, first FPV chose not to include a physical button. Finally, on the left side you can find these pads which are designed to align with the TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. And over here you can find pads for connecting other types of receivers, so you can power the receiver using 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and you can choose whether to use SBUS inversion or not. By default it's set to SBUS inversion, so you can see that the center pad is soldered with the right one, and if you simply want to set it to RX3 without using any SBUS inversion, desolder these two pads and solder the center pad with the left one. After soldering the TBS Unify Pro Nano VTX and the Crossfire Nano Receiver, the total weight is just over 9 grams, and this is a very neat way of organizing the stack, 
and also it creates a very slim profile. Overall, priced at $35, the Fierce FPV race pit offers a great value for money, it packs pretty much every available option in the market, and it's especially going to be good for you if you are a racer, or if you want to build a cheetah quad using the built-in camera switcher. So I'm looking forward to see how this flight controller is going to perform, and I'm going to feature it in a build video in the next few days. I just got the new TBS Stardust frame, it's made out of molded carbon, and it's also very light, and I'm going to use this flight controller in order to create an extremely light build. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.